Hello everyone, and welcome to the product introduction video. My name is Ola Draper, CTO for COP. Uh, and the product we're looking at today is the TP-Link EAP215 Bridge Kit. Uh, so these are wireless bridges, uh, essentially designed to get a network connection from one location to another, uh, transmitting it wirelessly. Uh, it is a kit, so you do get two in the box uh, with you. Uh, these have a transmission range of up to five kilometers. They transmit at five gigahertz, up to 867 megabits per second. So quite a decent transfer rate there. Um, what makes these really good is these are auto pairing out of the box. Uh, meaning as soon as you plug them in and power them up, they are talking to each other. So it saves configuration time and that complicated setup. It makes things really, really easy. Uh, they are IP65 rated, so super people going outdoors, which is good to know. Uh, in addition, they also have a 6 kilovolt uh, lightning protection uh, because these are going to be outside. So again, if there's any static atmospheric conditions or there's lightning, these things will be protected. So long as you use a, uh, an earthing uh, a, a wire going into there or if you're using a shielded ethernet cable, uh, as when to get an earth connection uh, back. Uh, they are passive PoE, so I'll get your PoE injector included, so you just put them into there. Uh, in addition to that as well, they also have two LAN ports additional on the bottom. So again, connecting to these, even though you've got a wireless connection elsewhere, uh, you can actually plug network devices in and get a network connection at the other location as well. Uh, now, because these are part of the Omada range, you can actually commission and look after these through the Omada platform. Uh, I've done other videos on Armada. If you go to the link in the top corner, uh, there's more videos there how, how to commission and set up Armada as a whole. Uh, but essentially, you add these into Armada. You could have a hardware controller or you could use a cloud-based controller and look after these devices from anywhere in the world. So it does make life a whole lot easier. Now, in addition to that, what I do like about these devices is they have the facility to also transmit their own Wi-Fi network. Uh, meaning, yeah, okay, you've got one of the the device where your network is, you've got one where your physical client device is, the camera, for example, whatever it is in the other location, and they're committing, a, 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 creating a wireless link, that's fine. Uh, these actually transmit their own wireless network as well. So essentially, you put in a wireless network at the other location as well and transmit your Wi-Fi. You don't need to put in other wireless access points in addition to this bridge kit. So what we'll do, let's get these out of the box and take a look and just see how we wire these up. So here are the two devices you get in the box. If I just pop them both over, so we'll take a look at the back of them. Um, what's quite useful to look at these, they actually indicate which one is the client and which one is the main one. So look at this one here, it says main AP. That is the one that goes on the customer's premises where their network already exists. If you look at this one, this one says client AP. So this is the one that you would connect to your uh, remote device where you've got it across the uh, yard or wherever it's going to be across the car park or wherever where you want to get that wireless connection link to again don't forget this can transmit up to five kilometers so if we just go to the main one to start with if i just turn it over i take off the uh, waterproof uh, cover and on the inside there as we can see we've got our uh, earthing strap that just goes onto there basically if you're going to uh, earth it back um we've got lan one port which is a poe in uh, again, if you are using shielded cable, you don't need the earthing strap there because shielded cable will give you the earthing going back anyway. And in addition, we've got two other LAN ports as well that we can connect other local network devices to. It also supports a 12 volt power input. So to wire this up, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, what I've got is I've got a PoE injector, which is just located uh, just here off camera there, as we got there. Uh, I've got one blue cable goes back to my local network, and this gray cable is coming out of the PoE uh, out of the actual injector just there, and then all I got to do is plug that into the PoE in. Put the cover back on. And that device is now booting up. As we can see on the side there, we've got our system lights coming on, and we can see our transmit power lights as well. And we can also see the LAN one is flashing away, indicating I've got the one LAN port and data is going over it. Put it to one side. What we've got here now is the client one. So again, if I take the cover of this one, again, the inside is exactly the same. Uh, we've got our earthing point there. We've got our POE uh, in our LAN one port and two additional LAN ports, including the 12 volt power supply. So again, just using a POE injector, which I've got here. All I've got to do Put that one cable into there. Put the cover back on. And then if you look at the side, we can see the system light is coming on 
And in a moment, we'll also get those lights come on on the side as well to indicate that it's actually transmitting as well. As well as getting LAN1 light, which is appearing just there. So now they're powered up, let's just see how we commission these. Okay, so these devices are here now. So I've got my one that's connected here, which I've got my blue cable going back to my local network as if it's, this is the main premises. And again, being powered up through injector to this device. The other one, which is the client one, which is sat at the opposite end over here, is just being powered off the POE injector, and it's got the one Ethernet cable going in from the injector. So this one isn't actually connected physically to my main network. Now, again, we could use a laptop to set this up one, but we can use the mobile app. It makes life a whole lot simpler. Now, if I just go into my wireless settings just for a brief moment, we can see I'm connected to my uh, uh, corporate network at the moment. If we look down there, though, there's two TP-Link 5 gigahertz devices. These things out the box are straight away transmitting their own Wi-Fi network and I could connect to these locally and do it a local setup. But we can make life a whole lot easier. We can use Omada to set this up instead. So, if I just open up the Omada app. Okay then. So in the Omada app, uh, again, I go into controller mode. I'm already logged in with my account. Uh, it says that at the top WLAN, I'm connected to the Crop UK corporate network, my normal Wi-Fi network I've got for other things going on. Um, now, with Omada, you've got to use a controller. Now you can purchase the OC200, the OC300 controller. Um, but instead of using a hardware controller, if I click Add Controller, I can use Omada Cloud Essentials. This is a free cloud-based controller. Now, granted, it doesn't give me all the features that the hardware controller does, but it gives me the majority of things I need to actually set these sort of devices up and look after a network in a simple and basic method. So I'm going to use the Cloud Essentials one. So I click Confirm. Uh, it's connecting. And let's give it a minute. Dull. Dead easy. Dead simple. Dead straightforward. Uh, let's click Get Started. Let's go for the setup. So it's giving me a controller name. I'm a controller underscore uh, D2, D687. I could change if I wanted to. I'll keep it as it is just for simplicity. Country. No, we're not United States. We're United Kingdom. So I'm going to change this there. And time zone, yes, we're in coordinated universal time, the UTC. I accept the term conditions and click next. Um, site name, get to create a site name. So I'm just going to call this uh, COP. Um, country region, application scenario. Let's say this is an office. Click done. Uh, and the device account username and password. So this is where I can create a username and password for uh, my account. So I'm just going to go with what I'm using at the moment. And then create a password of my choice. Ooh, got a special character in, didn't forgot that one. Okay. Uh, now straight away it's asking me, do I want to configure a wireless network? Um, so straight away I can commission a Wi-Fi SID, which means as soon as I create a wireless network, it'll push that wireless network to these devices. Um, as soon as I add the devices in. Um, but we'll skip it for now. Um, we'll do it afterwards. Um, so here's a summary about our controller, which is up in the cloud. So I'm not doing anything with these devices at this stage. I'm just creating my cloud-based controller. Um, click done. Uh, okay, so there's my Amada controller and there is my site at the bottom. So if I click on my site, I'm straight to my site. And as you can see, there's no devices in there at the minute. Click add device. Um, I now use the uh, camera to scan the QR code to add that device in. There we go, it's found the device. I click add this device. It's giving me the device uh, uh, name and this one ends in 65. Click done. Give that a moment or two. And there we go, my device is now added in. So if I go to devices now, there's my device now added in. It says it's in provisioning mode. So it's in the process of sort of setting itself up and pushing all the details to it. I can even see IP addresses it's pushed to it as well. Um, so again, that's made life a little bit easier. So that's going through its stages. Okay, that device is showing us connected now. Uh, so if I click the plus button, I can add in another device. So I scan the QR code on my other device now. Scan that one in there. Is that the device I want to add in? Yes, it is. Click add. And let's just see what happens. Um, so it says device online. So this one ends in FE. So that's the one that's at the opposite end that's not physically connected to my network. But it's saying online. So they must be talking to each other. Let's click done. Um, and there we go. It's on there. And it's even saying pre-configured. 
So again, it's already set up and doing its stuff. It's already sort of set up there and going. Let's have a look at the first one, the 6.5, which is this device here. Click into there. I can see all the details about this particular device. I can see the transmission, which is currently high because these things must be set on a high transmission rate by default on the box. The are only next to each other, so currently they will be actually technically screaming at each other. Uh, we can change that and alter it down. We might do that in a moment. Um, as we go down, we see the IP address this device currently has, the firmware version, the CPU memory utilization, uh, and all the various details about this device. I click the uh, cog in the top right corner. Uh, this is where I can set things like the IP details, look at my radio details. There we go. Power transmission is set to high. Let's drop this down to low. Go back. Back one more, click done, and that's going to reduce that down. So again, that will take a moment or two just to update itself uh, in the cloud. Let's go back to the cog. Uh, look at the load balancing. I want to do load balancing. That is an option. I've also got my WLAN group that I can create as well if I want to. Um, so that one again, we can see all the details about it. Dead easy, they're straightforward. Let's go back one. Uh, there's our other device ending in the IP address ending 108. Click on that device itself. Uh, and again, all the details are relatively similar to each other uh, in that sense as well. Again, click the current button. Uh, we can see the radio. We can see the transmission power. Saying low, because obviously now we've changed up there. It's now de determining that these two are talking to each other in a low transmission mode uh, as well. We'll go back. And there's my two, two devices at the minute. The FE1, that's the one that's the far end. It's still showing us provisioning at the minute. In a moment, that will say uh, uh, connected. Uh, and let's just see how that changes in a minute. Oh, okay, that's just changed. Um, so as we can see, 6.5, which is this one here, uh, is showing connected. Now the FE one, which is this one here, says connected, but it's got that little wireless symbol next to it, indicating that it's talking back to my system via a wireless connection. Um, so that is all good to go, doing its stuff. Uh, yep, we can see now down there the transmission is 14%, so that's great. So again, it's not, not screaming at each other as much now because we've dropped, we've dropped the transmission power right down. Um, if I go back to home, uh, we can see our devices uh, are connected to each other just there. We've got two APs. They're simple, they're straightforward. Uh, we can see exactly what's going on with these devices as well. If I go back, uh, go back again. So don't forget there at the top, I'm in controller mode and I'm currently connected to the Cop UK corporate network. Go back to our control again for a moment. Because what we can do from here, if I go back to this site, is now I can create a wireless network for these devices to transmit and I can join it as a Wi Fi network. So not only are they talking to each other to give me a network connection across, but these can transmit their own Wi Fi network as well. Uh, go to wireless settings, and here is where I can create my SSID. I can create a wireless name for these things to transmit their own Wi Fi network. So I'll just click on the plus symbol to create my wireless name, uh, give it a name of my choice, and just call this one um, COP T P Link Test. Something just easy. Um, device type EAP, yeah, that's what we're connected to. What band 2.45 gigahertz are automatically selected. Um, I could choose on 6 gigahertz as well, so long as the device does actually support it. Uh, as we go down, uh, security method is going to be uh, WPA personal, that's wireless protected access personal. Uh, it's going to be a pre-shared key. So I click on password and create a password of my choice. Uh, let me just call this one something like test1234. In reality, do something a bit more complicated than that. Um, and again, I've got various little details I can set about this wireless network. I can even create a guest network if I wanted to. Uh, but I'm not going to do today. I'm just going to click done. Uh, and then that's going to create that wireless network. And as you can see there, cop. TP link test and that's just sat there. Now, if I go back, uh, go back to my home, um, again, my devices are still there. Click on my dashboard. My dashboard shows the most active EAPs. Click on devices. Again, there are my uh, EAPs and click on clients. Uh, and then we just refresh this. Again, I've got wireless clients, got wired clients blocked. All the other clients there will show there. So these things now should be transmitting their own wireless network as well as create a connection between each other. Uh, so if I go to my uh, actual settings, my wireless setting on my device, um, I can then click to the COP network now at the minute, the COP UK corporate network. And there we go, COP TP link test. If I click on that one to join it, ask me for the password, um, test1234, click join. Uh, and I'm now joining the wireless network that these devices are creating themselves as well. So if I go back to my uh, thing, 
uh, as we can see there, yep, I'm showing a connection. As we go across, you can see how these are currently connected. Go to dashboard, go to devices, go to clients. And again, it will show me wireless, wired, blocked, just as previous. But currently, as it stands right now, I am actually technically connected to the wireless network that these things are actually uh, transmitting. So if I again go back to here, click on the details, and again, I can see the IP details that my phone is actually getting from the actual devices uh, themselves. Again, still still connected. I can still dial in and connect to these devices really easily, dead straightforward, uh, and see exactly what's going on, just as I did do uh, previously. There we go, everyone. That is how you set up and commission the TP-Link EAP215 Wireless Bridge Kit. Zip kit, get them two, one, two in a box, basically, good to go. Uh, and as we saw, they are commissioned straight out the box, and they already talked, which makes our life a whole lot easier. Uh, in addition, don't forget, they've got the actual additional Ethernet ports at the bottom as well, so you can connect more devices in there. You don't have to worry about having to add more switches or anything like that. Uh, furthermore, as we also saw as well, the ability to actually uh, uh, transmit their own Wi-Fi network as well, so it saves a hassle to put a wireless uh, uh, access point outside or having to want to get wireless connection out there, these things will do that uh, all for you. And as you saw, all commission through the TP-Link Omada app, again, just makes life a whole lot easier. Uh, if you aren't just these devices, go to the description below. The link is in there to our website. We can check these devices out. Uh, and as always, if you did like the video, please do hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe by hitting that icon in the bottom right hand corner. Uh, and as always, if you hit that bell icon, you'll be alerted to upload any new videos.